So we are going to start again in this donor engagement app that is going to be um, really focused again on, for example, our director of annual fund, really focused on again these campaigns, the metrics of how they're performing. Um, we can see at the top right here, this is going to be one of our dashboards. One thing I want to note is that everything that we're reviewing today is what a brand new nonprofit cloud instance looks like. It's pretty much all out of the box. I'll call out when there have been minor customizations made, but that one of the core strengths of Salesforce is how customizable everything is. So we could easily switch, you know, what reports are getting pulled in here, different dashboards, and there's just a lot of customization that can happen. One of the things that is nice about our dashboards is that, you know, this is showing a summarized information. These are actually both pulling from the same report, but showing this information a little bit differently. And we can really easy navig easily navigate from one of these dashboards into the core data. So you can really easily get between different um, records and just different views of the information you're looking for. And so we can see here, here's how that, um, you know, that chart was being generated. And if we jump into one of our campaigns, we're gonna take a look at what these records look like. So we've got kind of our highlights up here at the top, the key information we need to know about any given campaign. And then we've got our outreach summary. So this is gonna be summarized information based off of the different gifts that are connected to these campaigns. Um, these are again, customizable. These are just the summaries that are provided out of the box, but if there's different information you want to be seeing, that that is um, absolutely an option. We have some tracking information down here about you know, different values of the campaign. Um, again, this is gonna just let us really plan for these things in advance. Um, one of these items that we're gonna see throughout a couple of different apps here today is gonna be our tags. So these are ways to track donor interests and just categories that are spread across multiple different types of objects. And so for example, by tagging, this is part of you know, our food insecurity, through line, if we had donors that we know are interested in supporting um, food security, that we would make sure that they could get included in these campaigns and we'd have that information tied together. Where our campaign is kind of our umbrella approach to this particular, you know, everything that we're doing in between our start and end date. We've also got our outreach source codes. So these can capture individual appeals. That's gonna be a combination of channel and message and segment. So basically how we're sending out the appeal, what we're saying and who we're saying it to. And so, for example, if I dig into my email um, appeal, we can see again some summarized information that's even more whittled down to specifically a particular email that went out and track some information around, you know, source code. If we're having, you know, um, mail being returned back, making sure that things are tied to their correct um, appeal and then counted towards that correctly, as well as any notes we want to keep on the details of the particular message that went out. Next, we're gonna switch over into our philanthropy and partnerships app. So again, this is gonna be our major giving officer persona. As we can see here, we've loaded in an entirely new homepage. This has an entirely different dashboard that we're seeing here. That's again, this is really focused on what a major giving officer would wanna see. And so we're seeing some of their portfolio, some information about key donors. Um, again, we could jump into any of these to view our reports. One of the other um, items that's new with Nonprofit Cloud are gonna be our actionable lists. And so these are ways to group records and easily take action on these. And so we can see a couple that are provided out of the box. We've got our inbound referrals. And so if we had potentially incoming potential prospects, those could be segmented out separately from folks that are already in our major, major giving officers portfolio. We're gonna jump into this list quickly. This will show us kind of some key summarized information for all the records that are getting pulled in, and we can then actually take action on any one of these records. So, you know, for example, if we had talked with Caitlin earlier in the, the day and we wanted to be able to move her up from prospecting to the next stage, we're able to make those changes right here on that list and see that reflected in our summarized information. Um, we could also potentially reassign. So we can see all of these are assigned to my user right now, we could come in and take action to change these. Um, these are just some of the simple um, actions that are being able to be taken right out of the box, but then we can then further customize what actions are available from these lists. So if there's you know bulk actions that need to be taken on portfolio or uh, donors in your portfolio, that that can be you know further built out from some of these pages. I now want to go take a look at an individual donor's record. 
there's a lot of information on this page. We're going to cover some of them today. Um, if you do have specific components you want to hear more about, feel free to drop a question in the chat and we'll see if there is time for that at the end. But some of the items that I want to make sure get called out are going to be our fundraising timeline. So this is going to really consolidate information across those different gift types that we talked about before. And so in uh, bright green, we can see these are our different gift transactions. So these are actual funds being received from Alex. Um, we can see a recurring gift and see how that is kind of that commitment that's not actual funds received, but it's just saying, okay, is that an active or a no longer active recurring gift? Um, our crown, our orange crown is gonna be our opportunity. And so we can just see all of those different types of gifts collected here into one timeline, see them chronologically. Um, next up, I wanna call out our action launcher. We're gonna see this change when we go into our, our next app. Right now as the major giving officer, we can see that these actions are really focused on, again, relationship building, planning and completing constituent interactions, and then updating information if we wanna build out a donor portfolio. Um, this button, if I clicked it, would create a relationship between this donor and another person. And so just ways that we can really build out and further understand who this donor is. Um, we also see our tags come back here. And so again, we can see on Alex's record that she's interested in housing support. And so if there's you know, funding opportunities or campaigns that are going out around housing support, we can make sure we can do reporting and make sure that she's getting pulled into those um, because we've indicated that interest. We can see similar to our campaign summaries, this is some giving summaries that are as always, customizable on exactly what is being summarized here, are some of the fields that are available out of the box. And again, as our major giving officer uh, persona, we can see kind of open, uncompleted activities that we've got planned with Alex. So we know that we wanna give her a phone call, we wanna invite her to a volunteer day, as well as summaries of completed interactions with her. So again, really focused on that relationship building and the um, interactions that we're having with these constituents. We take a look down here we kind of get into the details of her record and so we can see this you know starting section here is going to be focused on basic demographic and contact information um, we've got tabs to further view the opportunities and gifts that we see over here in the timeline you know tracking her relationships um, one thing that we want to flag is that salesforce as we've been saying is extremely customizable and so any custom information you need to track will live on the same page as all of our out-of-the-box fields and so in this example we've got this custom field we've got some custom pick list values here um, but that is just like living at the same level as all of our kind of standard out-of-the-box fields um, this can even be seen if we hop over quickly to um, another way to view different types of records you know this is what's called a list view we can see that that custom field is just automatically pulled in and we're able to really, again, customize each of these views so that it's providing the right information at the right time for the right person. The last app that we're going to take a look at today is our fundraising operations app. Again, this is going to be focused on our gift processor persona. So we can see here that this doesn't have a dashboard. We are really focused on our recent uh, records especially focused around these gift batches since that's where a lot of a gift processor's time is gonna be spent, is looking at and processing gifts. And so as part of that, I wanna just quickly demonstrate the gift entry process starting with creating a new batch. So we've got the option to configure different templates for gift different gift types. These will really streamline, again, showing the correct fields, uh, the most relevant fields for different situations at the correct time. We've got options here to provide estimated gift counts and the value of the, all the gifts that are going to be in our, our batch. We've got some validation options here around whether or not the total and the like actual number and value of gifts needs to be able to match in order to fully process the gift. Um, so that can provide just a little bit of extra security and making sure that um, your gift information is getting entered accurately. Once a gift batch exists, we can then create new records, new gift entry records for each of the gifts that we're processing in this batch. And so, you know, we've got our split between is this gift coming in from an individual or an organization or a household? We can quickly find uh, the donor that we're pulling this in from and see some of their, again, basic contact information pulled in directly here. 
again, these are the out of the box fields, but any of these can get customized, pull in additional information, um, and that will all populate however it's populated on their actual donor record. Coming next to our gift receive date. So when did this money come in? Let's say it's yesterday. Um, out of the box, Nonprofit Cloud comes with the ability to check for those gift commitments. So, you know, we are skipping straight to that gift transaction. We're saying this money came in. We didn't know about it in advance, so we're going to process that. But this is a way so we can double check to say, okay, if this is a pledge payment and we knew that we were going to expect $100 on this particular date, that the system is checking to see, okay, do we have any open gift commitments for this amount, for this time period, and we'll help you to match those together. So again, you can have the best you know, data quality for your fundraising information as possible in the system. Coming down here, we can set that outreach source code. And so, as you saw, you know, we could potentially search by that source code we set on these, or we could say, okay, we know this is coming, is coming in because of that email. That ties it directly back to the campaign. So those outreach summaries that we looked at on the campaign and outreach source code records will have that updated giving information. We have got our payment method. Let's say that this came in as a check. We can see that there's some conditional logic for different methods to potentially pop up additional screens for whatever information you might need to be tracking. Once we provide a gift amount, that will populate this section here that will show where that money is gonna get allocated. Um, I'm gonna quickly fill these in. So this payment identifier can be used for a check number. It could be the last four of a, a credit card, depending on um, what method it is again. Uh, again, we've got a, a check date track there as well. So this could potentially be split if you knew that you wanted, the, the donor wanted to allocate some of it towards your unrestricted fund, but then some of it towards a particular other fund. That can be done by percentage or by amount. I'm gonna leave it off for our demo. And then we've also got the option here to associate, to give soft credit for this gift to another you know, individual or organization in the system. So we could potentially give somebody you know, credit as being an influencer um, or a solicitor of a particular gift, depending on how you know, your organization policies around soft credits. Again, I'm gonna leave that off for our demo. We can see here, we've entered all the information that we need to. And once we click save, that'll kind of process and then bring us back to the start so that if we did have you know, a batch larger than one, we could keep going in and creating those gift entries. Um, in this case, we're gonna come here and refresh our batch quickly. And so we can now see this single gift entry. We can see it has a gift processing status of new over here. Um, and so we're gonna just quickly just show processing that batch and then take a look at those associated gift records. Um, it can take some time for larger batches, but in this case, we refresh that quickly and now we're seeing a status of success, which means that you don't just have the gift entry record now, you have the actual gift itself. And so we'll see, this is that gift transaction. Um, if this was something that came, for example, as a pledge payment, we would link back to that gift commitment here. This gift entry record, you know, we'll continue it to exist. It has all that information that we entered, but then we actually want to go over to our gift transaction to see, you know, the amounts. Um, this is the actual gift that's going to get tied back to Alex's record. So again, this is all the information that we entered through gift entry. And now if we head back to Alex's record, we can see that in our timeline, we've got this latest gift. If we come down here, we can see um, that in our gift transactions related list, see all those gifts that are, are allocated to Alex. Um, one of the other things I wanna flag now that we're back on Alex's records, we can see how some of the organizations of different components has changed. Um, for example, we're not seeing um, tags in the same place as we did when we were in the philanthropy and partnerships app. And then if we take a look at our action launcher, we see that these actions are now really focused around the tasks that a gift processor might need to do. So managing or closing a gift commitment. So if a recurring donation needs to be updated or ended. Um, and so the nonprofit cloud is just very flexible to whatever um, action the user who is in the system at that moment needs to be able to do.